Weather with Lucas Goose, and Sports with Laurel Feeks. The April 2nd edition of iState News starts now. Welcome to iState News. I'm Jacob Stevens. And I'm Han Xiaohu. Thank you for joining us. At least 140 people were killed this morning by a gunman attacking a Kenyan college at MOI University in Garissa, Kenya. Was shots were fired upon at around 5 a.m. local time. The gunmen are part of the terrorist group Al-Shabaab from Somalia. In addition to killing 147 people, the gunmen took 600 people hostage and wounded 65. A security report was issued last week saying Al-Shabaab would attack Kenyan institutions as a response to Kenyan military attacks on Somalia. New information has been found on the co-pilot suspected of deliberately crashing an airline in the French Alps last week. Authorities are hoping to unearth more clues about the disaster from the black box within the plane. As investigators found the co-pilot's search history online this morning, the discovery came as German prosecutors revealed the details of the browser history of a tablet computer that includes researching medical method of retreatment, way to commit suicide, as well as cockpit doors and their security provisions. Investigators are continuing to look into detail on the case. Today, Iran and six world powers agreed on key parameters for resolving a long-standing dispute over Iran's nuclear program. European Union Foreign Affairs Minister Federica Mogherini formally announced the deal today. In addition to that, Mogherini said Iraq would not produce weapons, grade fuel, and that international monitors will have enhanced access to Iran's nuclear facilities, sanctions, uh, facilities. Sanctions will also be terminated, but the time is unspecified. Iran wants them lifted immediately, while the U.S. wants most of them in place until Iran follows through on the terms of the deal. President Obama called the deal a historic understanding. The president further said that the deal was not based on trust, but on unprecedented verification. He also said that it will, not, it will make sure the United States country, allies, and world are safer. Privacy regulators in Europe don't seem to be a fan of Facebook. The social media company is being investigated for its privacy pr practice by regulators from five European countries. Investigations are looking into the way Facebook handles personal data and making sure the company follows European Union privacy policy. A potential new law could give regulators the power to increase penalty fees to 5% of a company's global end revenue. Facebook is currently audited for its privacy policy by a firm in Ireland. An inmate on Alabama's death row for nearly 30 years will go free after prosecutors said there is not enough evidence to link him to the 1985 murders he was accused of. A judge on Thursday dismissed the case against Anthony Ray Hinton. Last year, the U.S. Supreme Court sent the case back for a potential new trial. Back in 1985, Hinton was charged with two murders during separate robberies in the Birmingham area involving fast food restaurants. The prosecution rested Thursday in the murder trial of former New England Patriots star Tide and Aaron Hernandez after spending more than two months representing a case that he killed the boyfriend of his fiancée's sister. Hernandez has replaced not guilty to murder in the June 17, 2013 killing of Odie Lloyd, who has found dead in an industrial park less than a mile from Hernandez's home. At the time, Hernandez had a 14 milling contract with the patron. 18 jurors began the trial in January, but three were dismissed, including one who was accused of misrepresenting her answer during a screening a bit to get onto the jury. Working at McDonald's can soon make more than minimum wage. McDonald's will be raising the wages of its minimum wage employees starting July 1st. The wage will be increased by a dollar, which will increase the national, will increase the average wage of a McDonald's employee to over $10. The wage increase will not be applied to franchise employees, however, which operates over 50% of all U.S. stores, according to the Wall Street Journal. Other companies have already raised the minimum wage of its employees, including Walmart. A few determined Drake University students 
who are undrafted over university policy are taking matters into their own hands. Launching a web campaign titled Demand a Better Drake, the students are demanding the school's administrative uh, create better sexual assault policy. The request comes a week before the U.S. Department, Department of Education began its investigation into a light titled Nine Violations at Drake. The student campaign involves a list of demand and an online petition via their website that they encourage all students to sign. The university has acknowledged this group's concerns, but not to extend their would like and are planning to meet with the university soon. The controversial law, involved, the controversial law giving businesses the religious freedom to review service to the LGBT community was changed late Monday. The Religious Freedom Restoration Act was signed last Thursday by Governor Mike Pence, but was immediately met with protests from politicians, entertainers, and the Indiana LGBT community. Opponents of the bill expressed concern over the idea that businesses could now discriminate against people with a different sexual orientation. The new version of the law clarifies that it will, now, it will not allow businesses to discriminate against gay Hoosiers, a fix that Republican backers and Governor Mike Pence had once argued was not necessary. According to supporters, the original goal of the bill was to allow people to continue to practice their beliefs. With their internet age advancing day to day, it's been expected that program become absolutely daily, and it's finally time for the oldest browsers that we have all come to love and then hate come to an end. Microsoft's Internet Explorers is finally come to an end, but Microsoft isn't putting any time off in creating its new browsers for the digital age. The yet-to-be-named browser is currently being called Spartan and is introducing a lot of new stuff that wasn't in Internet Explorer and even in big-time browsers like Google's Chrome and Mozilla's Firefox. With no release date scheduled, look for spent, uh, Spartan to hit desktop sooner rather than later. Local schools are rearranging their calendars for next year. Both the State Senate and House of Representatives passed a bill setting August 23rd as the earliest day schools can start classes. The bill has yet to be signed by Governor Terry Branstad, but the Ames School Board is preparing for the change. Last year, Ames started classes on August 14th. Superintendent Tim Taylor said the, the later starting date could push the last day of school to early June. Incoming exchange students face a big shock with the college culture in the States. Coco Kwa has more with the voice from an exchange student coming from the other side of the globe. There are over 4,000 international students in our state, but there are only 60 exchange students this semester. Exchange students can face a big shock here as they have been shaped by the culture at the home institutions. Jason Il, an exchange student from Hong Kong, shared his story. In Hong Kong, where well, uh, students will usually uh, find the answer by themselves instead of uh, asking questions in, in the lesson. The emphasis on final exams in Hong Kong bit him a deadline final for exams but not here in our state. Uh, here, at the exam, examination, uh, you have to study uh, uh, all, all along uh, in the semester instead of the final few days in, in the final exam. Our staters, let's explore the cultures of different universities by interacting with fiction students. I'm Koho Kwok reporting for ISD News. Stay, stay tuned. When we come back, we'll tell you about how Iowa State Equality Awards went. You're watching Iowa State News.
our neighbors and best friends. <laughs> I love my sister. My heart, my heart doesn't, doesn't see race. race. Love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. An alley in Northfield Main Street is in the process of upgrading the electrical infrastructure, according to the Ames Tribune. Work began Monday in the alley behind the Sheldon Munn Hotel. Contractors will be spending the next few weeks working in the alley in the southeast corner of the parking lot at 308 Fifth Street. Vehicles will not have access to the alley, but vehicles can still park in the lots accessed from Fifth Streets and the west side of the hotel. If you have lived in the dorms, it's easy to see that they are getting crowded, but the new resident hall is said is elevated to congestion. Iowa State, I State News reporter Kimberly Wu has the scoop. A design has been selected for a new residence hall to begin construction in May. Director of Residence Pete Englund says that as freshman enrollment continues to grow along with a 58% increase for on-campus living, a new building was necessary. Increase in the freshman class has taken up a lot of our residence hall space. We have just under 7,200 residence hall beds. And when a freshman class approaches 6,000, close to 96% choose to live with us, it only leaves 11 or 1,200 residence hall beds for upper class. IRHA vice president and ISU student Cole Stout says the demand is for multiple reasons, but one sticks out among all. Um, and I think it's attributed to the experience that the Department of Residence provides along with working with IRHA in the, in the halls and the hall councils. It's not just a place to live, it's a place where you meet your friends that you're going to have for the rest of your life. The residence hall will house more than 780 beds with a traditional dorm style living. Some of the amenities include four elevators, showers with closing doors, four bathrooms per floor, and ample study space throughout. Stout says the new hall will provide a view unlike any other. Opus, something they did that I really liked was their front porch. It's not actually a porch outside, but right outside the elevator bank, there's um, floor to ceiling glass, and then there'll be like a permanent seating area right along the glass. So it kind of provides a, another little mini space. Englund says student input was a high priority in the design. So this facility is entirely constructed on the advice of students on, um, in some ways, what they needed, um, less so than what they wanted. The groundbreaking of the new residence hall will take place here on May 11th. Its doors are set to open spring of 2017. With Michelle Shoning, I'm Kimberly Wu. This is I State News. Biking across campus may be a convenient way to get to your classes, but why would an ISU student be biking across the country? Zoe Mock, a freshman at Iowa State in landscape and architecture, will ride her bike across the U.S. with the Bike and Build program. The Bike and Build program, which started over 10 years ago, contributes to the affordable houses efforts across almost all 50 states by stopping in towns and organizations or organizing houses for those in need. Mock heard about the program after participating in RAGBRA this summer and said she is excited for her opportunity to travel and build with others and build with others for others. Alpha Chi Omega hosted their annual Casa Diaz fundraiser from 5 to 8 p.m. yesterday. Public Relations Major Hunter Martin was in charge for this year's Casa Diaz party. The Iowa State University chapter of Alpha Chi Omega has been hosting Alpha Chi Casa Diaz for almost five years in support of sexual assault awareness. The annual event is typically held during April. Over 825 people attended and queued outside for the Alpha Chi Omega sorority house to show support for their cause. Guests of Alpha Chi Casa Diaz had the opportunity to not only donate to charity by paying for a meal, but also sign a pledge upon entering, this sor entering the sorority house. The pledge, in the shape of a hand, were placed in posters with the chapter, These Hands Don't Hurt. The posters will be displayed in the chapter's 
facility in honor of the survivors of, of domestic violence and sexual assault. They will be having another philanthropic event in October in conjunction with the Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Iowa State celebrates equality. Kelly Warner has more. The Margaret Sloss Women's Center teamed up with LGBT Student Services to honor individuals at an equity ceremony in Hawk Hall Atrium on Tuesday, March 31st. Dr. Kelly Sanders, the Senior Associate Director of Athletics, was the keynote speaker and shared her experiences as a woman in the athletics department. <laughs> Today we witnessed a celebration of equality at the Gender and Sexuality Awards reception. The ceremony recognized outstanding leaders and spokespersons for equality in the Iowa State community. The Margaret Sloss Women's Center and the LGBTSS have worked very closely together. Um, we have similar missions, but it's also very different. Um, but we believe gender equity and sexuality equity are something that's really important to us um, and we could combine our efforts together. So what we're doing is awarding um, scholarships and awards to folks who are creating a more inclusive campus here at Iowa State for um, folks of all genders and sexualities. Nominations around February asking if anyone has someone they wanted to nominate who has really fought for gender equity um, in the Iowa State community. So it could be a student, a faculty member, um, someone who just works in Ames and works with Iowa State, who's really trying to advocate to make sure that we're promoting equity for both genders, for all genders. Among the awards was the Margaret Slash Gender Equity Award, the LGBTSS Change Agent Award, and the Emerging Leader Award. Many scholarships were given out to students who demonstrated outstanding leadership. With iState News, I'm Kelly Werner. Ames residents interested in learning more about water conservation, reducing electric use, and lowering your carbon footprint are invited to attend the Ames Annual Eco Fair this Saturday. The event provides a board array of the conservation information, including displays about the city, eco smart programs, and vendors with energy saving tips. Vendors and organizations from around the community and Iowa State will be participating in this event. The fair is scheduled from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the community gymnasium at 515 Clark Avenue. So, sorry. So, Lucas, are we expecting to good weather for Easter this weekend? Well, Honcho, we can expect uh, the late weekend to be better than this coming Friday. I'll tell you more in my forecast. You're watching iState News. In the small town of Elmira, New York, a boy was born into an all-American family. The odds of him opening his own clothing store at the age of 18? One in 138,000. Excited to be a part of pop culture, he packed for the big city. The odds of finding someone to invest in his vision? One in 4.5 million. The odds of him achieving his dream in the fashion industry? One in 23 million. The odds of having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 68. I am Tommy Hilfiger, and my family is affected by autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. No está nada mal. ¿Y qué tiene de raro? Bueno, la práctica hace el maestro. No tienes que ser perfecto para ser un padre perfecto. Hay miles de adolescentes en foster care que no necesitan perfección. Te necesitan a ti. I'm Lucas Goose and I'm back with the weather. Right now in Ames, it's a high of 64. The sun is bright out today. The wind is coming from the northwest at 14 miles per hour. 
Our humidity is at 27% and our dew point at 29. And Almanac for today, in 2003, the high record was 85 and low record in 1975 was 17 degrees. And current temps around the state in Davenport, it's 69. Des Moines is at 67. Ames at 64. Mason City at 60, 64. Sioux City at 65. And Council Bluffs at 63. And for our national temps, Miami is at 80 degrees. Atlanta at 75. Chicago at 63. Minneapolis at 63. Denver at 36. San Francisco at 66. And Phoenix at 84. Our tonight lows are in the mid, low 30s. Uh, Davenport at 43, Ottumwa at 42, 39 in Ames, Mason City at 33, Sioux City at 35, and Council Bluffs at 40. And our seven day forecast is Friday we have a high of 54, a low of 40. Saturday we have a high of 62, low of 27. And Sunday we have partly cloudy at a high of 66, low of 42. And rest of the week is pretty much cloudy, but our Monday is at 66, low of 47. Tuesday, 62 at low of 44. Wednesday at 54, low of 34. And Thursday at 57, high of, low of 35. Thank you. No big excuse. Enjoy your weekend. Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Welcome back. I'm Laurel Feeks. T.J. Otzelberger is headed back to Ames. It was announced Wednesday that he was the former University of Washington assistant coach was going to come home to work on Fred Hoiberg's staff. Otzelberger originally worked for Iowa State from 2006 to 2013. For his first four seasons as assistant coach, he worked under Greg McDermott and his final three seasons under Hoiberg. The former assistant coach played a huge role in recruiting for the Cyclones while he was here. We are happy to have him back. Naz Long is doing well after having surgery to correct a hip pointer. Long had Arthur... Arthrosco arthroscopic surgery on his left hip. The surgery was performed by Dr. Brian Worm at Mary Greenlee Hospital here in Ames. The junior will likely be out for three to five months. The Ontario Natives started 33 of 34 games for the Cyclones and made 77 three-pointers in the 2014-2015 season. The U.S. Women's National Team is starting their final campaign in St. Louis this weekend before they head to the World Cup in Canada. Jill Ellis and company are currently ranked second in the world and have been testing out their roster throughout the year by bringing up rookies like Julie Johnston and bringing back veteran Lori Kolopny. 
Star forward Abby Wambach is currently being scrutinized for not playing for her club team, Western New York Flash, and she ended up being traded to Seattle while New York received Sydney LaRue out of the deal. The team is used to scandal as veteran goalkeeper Hope Solo was allowed to return to the team after she was suspended for being in a U.S. soccer van while her husband was driving under the influence. Add Marcus Mariota to the list of top picks not attending the NFL draft at the end of April. Mariota said that he won't be heading to Chicago on April 30th because he wanted to be surrounded by the community that raised him. The Oregon alum told the NFL that it was personally and culturally important for him to stay in Hawaii. Jameis Winston will also not be in attendance, which came as a shock because he is the top quarterback draft pick for 2015. Winston also said that he will be staying home with his family because his grandmother cannot travel to Chicago. The Indianapolis Colts got in the April Fool's spirit yesterday when they released fake all-white jerseys to freak out the Colts nation. The team even went as far as to make a fake video unveiling the new kit. The Twitter account of the Colts repeatedly used the hashtag whiteout and eventually let the gag go by releasing a pic that said, April Fool's Colts Nation, we wouldn't change a classic. Thanks for tuning in. Jake and Han Shao will be back after the break. Live with a human for a while and you get to know a few things. Like, I know she's actually not a morning person. I know she does strange tricks for no treats. I know that water makes her howl like crazy. I even know how the floor stays so clean. She's quick. But the one thing I will never for the life of me know is how she gets so tiny and inside that box. Natalie, how do you get so tiny? There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Don't let E. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So always separate raw meat from vegetables. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Actors Will Ferrell and Kristen Wiig are mainly known for their roles in popular movies, popular comedic movies. However, according to The Hollywood Reporter, the two stars worked on a lifetime movie called A Deadly Adoption. The movie is about a couple who takes care of a pregnant woman in hopes of adopting her unborn child. Things go wrong. However, as the plot takes on the characteristics of a stereotypical Lifetime movie, the film is in post-production and is likely to be released early this summer. Early this week, Trevor Noah was chosen to replace Venturian funny man June Stewart on The Daily Show, but was he first a choice? According to a tweet by ABC's Bill Simmons, Comedy Center pursued Louis C.K., Amy Schumer, and Amy Poehler before giving the call to Noah. Louis C.K. has gained national phrase of his dark comedic show, Louis, while Schumer or uh, Poehler could have been the first woman to host a daily show on Comedy Center. They went zero for three. Simmons judged. This will be a Noah's first time hosting a talk show in America. The most powerful man in the Catholic Church is being told to lose some weight. Pope Francis has been told by doctors at the Vatican to, to eat less pasta, walk more, and lose a little weight to take the strain off his aching back. The 78-year-old is not shy about his love for pizza and pasta. When in Rome, right? That'll wrap up this edition of iState News. Thanks for joining us.